Gotcha. All right, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, I'd like to open this uh, city council work session. I'll call this meeting in order and roll call, please. Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Green? Mr. Wilson? Here. Mr. Laster? Here. Mr. Galloway? Here. All right, uh, item three is the acceptance of the minutes. Any questions, comments, additions, deletions to the minutes? That was uh, emailed out to you. Hearing none, see none? Thank you, Brenda. Uh, number four is the inventory and account specialist job description. I believe that's Michael. How you doing, sir? Doing well, how are you? Doing well. Uh, they recommend that you change and update job descriptions every few years. Um, and since we have a retirement for this position, I thought now was a good time to, to make a few tweaks to it. Any of the changes that you see are very minor changes. I just, <coughs> they don't, they don't change the scope of the job. I'm not asking for a range change or, uh, in, or qualifications change. It's just in order to update the job description. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, the, one of the first things that added, I added the, um, that they deal with the State of Alabama Municipal Collections Program. That's something that's been relatively new in the past few years, and I think the city utilizes them to collect some debts, but. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it's a program by the state where uh, people that leave owing utility bills, and they can leave owing government money, so they could owe uh, ambulance bills and other things like that. We turn that debt over to the, this state clearinghouse, and they will actually intercept people's income tax refunds from the state. And they send the money to us to pay off their debt. So that's something that this person yeah, it's a great program. It's like we, $45,000 Yeah. Yeah, so it's a great program. And this is our uh, person that does most of our collections. So that's uh, their, one of their main responsibilities in dealing with the municipal intercepts office. So um, but those are, that's just an example. I mean, like I said, the rest of them are just small tweaks mm -hmm. to it. But um, I'd be glad to answer your questions. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Sherry, any no questions? No. Thank you, sir. You're going to be ready. <laughs> well, that's a good question. <laughs> People want to know. I know. We every Just about every other customer asks us the same thing. Of course, they originally, um, it's supposed to be done um, about the same time as the new city hall, so around January. But uh, they ran into a few issues. Uh, that with six weeks into the project, they were already four weeks behind. Cool. Because that what that used to, there used to be a home place there, and uh, they found a well. It's just a small household well there, and so we had to call in a well company to come make sure we closed that well properly. They found some bad dirt that had to be taken out and new dirt brought in. So that it, that created quite a few delays for us. But I think they're back on track now. Not a, not up to where they need to be, but they're. They're working again, so that's at least something positive. Up to footings in the next week or so. So. Well, maybe so. Maybe you'll be in it soon. I hope they catch up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, item number five is the Eastwood Storm Shelter uh, update. Mark. As y'all know, we applied for that uh, FEMA grant. Four, four and a half years ago. Out of the blue, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, I just called our contact at Alabama EMA to see if she could get us an update. And she's been doing that pretty regular. Well, this time when I asked her, she said, well, as a matter of fact, we have gotten the draft approval letter. She said, we don't have the one that's got a signature on it, it's just the draft. So she said that she's expecting that just any time. Well, in the meantime, um, Mr. Taylor and I, it, I, I guess it's whenever we were meeting down at Eastwood School one day. Yeah. You know, it's time we started this grant. Um, the Eastwood School project was not even being thought about. So the location that is in the application, as y'all know, is right out front. Well, now I think that we may want, now that we have an emphasis on revitalizing the school building, we may want to shift it. 
the lady with Alabama EMA says that that will require a scope of work change, which has to go back to FEMA. Oh, cool. And as y'all know, four and a half years later, the prices are going to be up. So we are, we're also. Was well, it going to take another four and a half uh, after that? She says not. Work change? She says not, but I, wow. I have no idea. Um, but we would also have to request a budget amendment. And the way that works, Alabama EMA looks to see how much money is in the Alabama coffers to see if there's any additional that can be put towards our project. And she seems to think there is. I mean, she's had nothing but positive things to say about a budget amendment. Um, but that too does have to go back to FEMA. Mm -hmm. But she said that she can't imagine it taking anywhere near as long to do the scope changes and amendments, <coughs> budget amendments as what it did for this original approval. All right, let me ask you a question, scope. You should have, I guess, from what I understand, there's a certain area it was scoped out, right? Yes, ma'am, can you pull that? Photo up. Is would there be a reason you have to get it approved instead of running it this way if you ran it long ways on that scope yep. and that it would pull it out of the way of the scoop? Um, okay. There's two X's in the northern part of that property. Yeah. The lower X is the original location, and what we're talking about doing it is shifting it across the road where that wooded area is, mm -hmm. and that being the new location. It's only about 170 feet, which in my mind, what's the big deal? It's still on the property. We're only moving it 170 feet, but she said if you move it one foot, FEMA requires a scope change. Wow. So, but you know, that's not been officially sent to anybody. I just wanted y'all to kind of see where it would be shifted to. Um, she was telling me too, because I've kind of been under the impression that the project was also going to include a parking lot for 28 cars. She said that the application that FEMA approved only says that it will have two handicapped parking spaces. So, um, and, and in my mind, I'm thinking it may be good that the parking lot's not part of this, especially since we're wanting now to possibly revitalize the school we would have control over where we want to put the parking. Mm -hmm. If it's part of this grant, then we're going to be locked in to where it goes. Mm -hmm. So, I'd, I'd ask Mark to kind of give us the overview again of this, because uh, my concern is we're going to get in the same situation that we have with other grants. It is four and a half years ago, it was a $400,000 grant, a 80-20 uh, split. Uh, like, I think it was or, like three. 50 something okay maybe. yeah and, but so that cost now is no telling what um, you know even though they say the state could could be an easy transfer to us to get the extra funds we need to but we don't know so that's just something we're going to be looking at if and when finally after all this time it does finally get to so here it is and we have to make a decision I want to say I'll have to kind of have a time to think about it because then a lot of times it comes up that if we don't take certain grants there's a fear or concern that you will never get that type of grant again because you've turned it down. Because you've prevented somebody else from getting mm -hmm. the grant. Mm -hmm. The other yeah, thing we've, I we've prevented. The, ori the original that. architect that I guess Tony Rispoli, when mm -hmm. she was uh, city clerk, uh, worked with to get this going was Mark Burns. I started, he was calling me pretty regular over the last several years, just wanting an update. Well, about a year ago, I didn't hear from him, so I started trying to call him. Hadn't gotten in touch with him. Well, I finally sent him another email one day last week saying, look, I need to know we're getting close to approval. Do you want to move forward with us? About two days later, he finally gave me a phone call and said, yes, he's 100% on board that he wants to move forward. So I was telling him that we would probably need an updated cost estimate. Um, but the lady at Alabama EMA said, I wouldn't have him do anything until we have that letter in hand signed by FEMA. Now, if you see your four years and you figure inflation rate at even 10%, that's 30, a 30 or 40% increase in cost from that 350. Yeah, I think we're probably, I mean, it could potentially. It's going to hit 400 or more. Yeah, more than mm -hmm. that. I yeah, think it's going to be 400 or 450. But, 
I do think the original cost estimate did include that parking lot though. So if FEMA doesn't have that as part of what they're approving, whatever money he did have in there just rolls over to the building. So, you know, if we still may be under 400, I don't know. I guess it's no way to know this for sure, Mark, till we see some documentation. But I wonder if they're saying the parking lot may be in there, but you've got to ensure you have to. Yeah. No, she, the lady with I Alabama EMA said Perhaps. for definite that the parking lot's not in there. No. It's only two parking spaces for <coughs> ADA. And you've got such, you, you're, you're so motivated with Eastwood, I wouldn't want this that we've waited yeah. on so long to kind of squash the enthusiasm. I know immediately it's going to, you have to redesign the, the uh, disc golf. Well, you know, you're not know, looking. It's yeah, depending on where it goes. It's, it's going to interfere with how the disc golf yeah, has I been laid out. I did mention this to Janice today. Mm -hmm. She and I were talking about something else, and I mentioned the, the shift. Mm -hmm. So she is aware. Well, we were in one of our visits with the gentleman out of Birmingham. First thing he said, well, if you're going to put that thing there, how is anybody going to see the school? So that's... I mean, the school's up on the knob there, but still, that's, that's going to be the first thing you see when you turn in, if it's where it's currently located. Well, could we have a sunken... Storm shell, dig it deeper than normal. <laughs> Put it down. Just have the roof line. Well, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the good thing about that wooded area, of course, we're going to want to push the trees out far enough that if we did have a storm, mm -hmm. we wouldn't want trees to fall on it. So we could create a, a wide open buffer around it. But I think we could still leave some trees on the west side, just kind of make a little try, have a little triangle of trees that would kind of block it from the road. And this was a, a an updated storm shelter. This was not just the the standard, the standard yeah. you know, semi-oval building. It, it was going to going to have facade and some greenery around it. That we. How many people would it hold? 110. 110. 100. A hundred. What they call standard and ten handicap. Okay. And it'll have two restrooms. It's got a generator. Like generator big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, you would you would think though, as long as you're in the same scope and purpose of of an idea, yeah. um, why would you not that same money be able to be applied to Eastwood to harden the gym? But I know that's another. That's just that's just me thinking common sense. And well, so we have no idea. We're at the mercy of not knowing until they send us send the mayor a, a letter signed, sealed, and delivered. And then we have to start the request to do a scope of work change. The whole time where you won't be able to do any of those other things you want to do because of the fear of actually receiving a grant. We'll figure something out. Yep. Mm -hmm. I had to twist arm Mark's arm to make sure he gives all that bad news tonight. So <laughs> yeah. thank you for doing that. That's all right. Just don't shoot the messenger. Yeah. All I can say is just don't look when you drive by. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. All right, uh, any other business that come before the yes, council? Yes, I have two things. You have some good news about first, Eastwood? Yes, we'll okay, have some right. good things about Eastwood. I, I'm sorry, but first of all, I was going to ask Cody, did you ever, the committee for the waterfall down here, did you ever get? No, any, I have not. The committee made up, did you hear anything from I've them? I've never been sent any names okay. for, but, for people. But from our side, our part of the committee is ready to go? Yes. Okay. Okay, now let me go to Eastwood. I, I was just curious about Thank that because I know that was a big item last time. Uh, we met with Randy Swain. Swain? Yes. Isn't that way you pronounce Swain? Mm -hmm. uh, who's worked for Bradshaw Pitts, I, I think, if my memory's correct. But Randy's been around a long time and he is uh, wanting to help us get the school going. So we met. Tony and the mayor and Mark Williams and Randy came by and we went through. The good part of it is, he's, the first part that I really think is good, is the chimneys are in good enough shape that we don't have to take them down. So that got me thinking and in discussing that we need to take and go back, strictly back to the way the school looked. So I got Ben to do a little work here and this is the way we can make the school be even more historical correct by doing this than having what we had. And um, because Randy, I talked to him about 20 minutes on the phone today. He didn't have the final numbers, probably tomorrow. 
he's waiting on the windows, but he has got the windows, the window maker to make the windows just exactly like they were. There'll be metal on the outside, but it'll be wood just like they had when the school. He's got it worked out for the windows in the gym where they'll be replicas as well. And he's gonna send us, when he sends the quote, as far as the roof's concerned, it's gonna be per square foot. Not knowing how much decking and everything's mm -hmm. gotta be out, and hopefully it may not be that much, that we'll have a realistic way we can figure out how many square feet we really need of it to plug into our quote. But he's gonna quote it out as far as that part of the building being refurbished, and then he'll give us the rest of the part. Uh, and then we can decide how the money goes or whatever. In his mind, and he buys into what we've all talked about is getting the school, that part, with the roof, the windows, and the doors, and then we work the inside later. But uh, the committee, the Fab Five will meet Wednesday, mm -hmm. and I'll share this information with them and make sure where they are, because I'm gonna ask them to go ahead and start continuing the push to get grants and uh, Bert has talked and Richard have talked about the 5013C that they already have that we can use if people want to contribute in that manner. So uh, Wednesday will be a good day. We'll have the numbers and they can see what what's lies out ahead of them. But uh, it's exciting. And Stanley Carr and his group and everything did AD a bang up job getting it. You can walk through there and feel safe now. Uh, they did a good job on the outside and inside. So, I mean, it's already got a different presence mm -hmm. that people can see what, what the city's gonna try to do and the committee's gonna try to do, so. But I'll keep you posted on it, but it, it's, it's moving well and we'll just have to keep everybody going on the torch. But I, I really, it's exciting. And it may be real exciting tomorrow when those numbers come in, or it may be getting partly cloudy when some of those numbers come in. But uh, Randy's got a lot of good contacts, and, and he's, uh, well, I think, you know, he told us mm -hmm. they're going to help us to hit that corporation to help us and stuff, too. So. Well, he, he seemed passionate about the project, he also. And that was, that's kind of. He's all in on mm -hmm. it. Uh, so. But thank you that's for the time. Mm -hmm. The community is really excited about it. Well, they don't have to how they paint and paint and stuff. We may, we may have paint parties and stuff. Or write a check. And we didn't see how they really write a need, check. We need the labor of money. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. You have some? Uh, I was just two questions. Where are we stand on our sidewalk on for George Dow? Our top ground. We, we met with the engineers. Like this past, mm, yes, I think so. Wherever it was. Where, what, where was that? Thursday, it doesn't matter. Thursday. You want to give us a quick update? Yeah, um, Goodwin Mills and Kaywood came to the meeting with their proposed layout of where the sidewalks would be. So we had a factor that was myself and the mayor and um, Tony, we met with them. And there's a few tweaks here and there, but for the most part, I mean, they had it dead on where it needs to be. They, they seem to think they should be able to email us something that we could present to the school board or at least send to the school board to make sure we do have their blessing to, to finish this project that they that they've wanted done for us. Part of the trail is going to wind up encroaching into their property. Of course that we've already got a letter from them. Um, it was when their interim superintendent was there. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. But it was that school board approval of him writing a letter saying that they would be willing to give us a easement in perpetuity for any type of time frame they give you mm -hmm. on um, and talk about the engineers like well, I mean like like any time frame on when we could like we're gonna get to They start moving some dirt. Yeah, start mean, moving I, dirt and let's see. <laughs> I thought you said bid out in the fall. Yeah, I think and, and be ready to break ground by next spring. Bid, maybe in late, late August. Are you kidding me? Well, that's just what they about that was am I wrong? What's that? Then they said usually they they probably have it bid out by the by the fall. I think. And then probably be springtime before it to get started. It's a long time. Yeah. It's a long time. Uh, yeah. It better not have a flaw in it if it's taking that long to figure out. <laughs> it's only taking seven years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> before later, before yeah. we leave this place in 2025, I want you to at least get these one these two projects we've been going since the beginning done, finished. The other thing that they're having to do too, you know, we've also got an MPO project to resurface George Douthat. So under that project, they're doing some additional curb ramps and so forth that will allow this trail to tie to those. So both engineering companies are working pretty close together to make sure everything works together. <clears throat> um, my second one is, are, are we close to being able to pump water into our, our ponds? Still don't have a pump. We've got to build a pump house and get power to it. It's going to be a while. Okay. So are we waiting on a, on a pump? And I don't have a time frame on that. I didn't think check that. I'll check that and see where we are with it. But the water looks good in that fountain. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we saw you playing in it. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Anything our, else? Our department guys did a good job getting the fountain back in place. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure did. did. I am. Awesome. Didn't get anybody drowned. I'm anything. just glad we found it when you were where we had stored it and, it and it's still operational when we put it back out there. <laughs> that, that's, that was a plus. Well, it, it had some damage to it when it got loose before they had seen it all. They had some repair work done to it, too. And it's back, back working. Yeah. Anything else? No, oh, sure. All right, we'll, uh, we'll adjourn and get started back in about three or four minutes. Thank you all. Yes, ma'am.
Good evening again, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to the City of Jacksonville work session. I'll call this meeting to order. And ask you all to please stand while our very own Terry Wilson gives uh, the invocation. And then remain standing for Pledge of Allegiance. Councilman? Thank you, sir. May we pray? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you, we ask for your forgiveness for our daily wrongdoings. We, but especially we ask for your wisdom, for your patience, and for your strength to help us be the type of people you want us to be. As a city, as a community, we need your love and your guidance as always. Thank you for all those that work for the city and for what they do. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to come here tonight. And what we say and do would bring glory to your name and be pleasing to you. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Roll call, please. Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Green? Mr. Wilson? Here. Ms. Laster? Here. Mr. Galloway? Here. Right, item five is the adoption of minutes. Any any discussion? So moved. All right, I have a motion and or second. Second. All right, anything else? Hearing nothing, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I just have a motion carries. The adoption of the agenda. Do we have any changes tonight? We do. To the main agenda, add item 12A, consider action to approve the appointment of the following. Robin Crompton, part-time laborer for Senior Center Program. Range one, effective upon compliance with ordinance number 273 due to the resignation of Melissa Clay. Also to the main agenda, amend item 24, which is the adjournment. And then to the consent agenda, add item 17, uh, purchases over 7,500, item 1B, $43,730.86 to Empire Pipe and Supply for six inch and two inch water meters and bolts for JPWP number 22-101, New City Hall to be reimbursed. And item two for the fire department, A is $7,964.53 to Williams Fire Apparatus for repairs to 2000E1 truck number 122496. Thank you, ma'am. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. And do I have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all there say aye. 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 I just have that motion curious. Uh, proclamations, I believe we'll move on to item eight. Public comments concerning any agenda item. This is the time I think you have, you have anything on the agenda that you'd like to address to council. This is time to do so. Seeing no one come forward, we'll move on to item nine. Public hearing regarding vacation of unimproved Alabama Street Northwest that lies west of Burke Avenue Northwest. All right, I'll call this public meeting open. Anyone like to come up and discuss uh, the vacation <coughs> of the street there on Alabama Street and West Burke Avenue? Seeing no one come forward, we'll close. We'll close the hearing. Item ten. Consideration of resolution number R-2172-23, vacating unapproved Alabama Street Northwest that <coughs> lies west of Burke Avenue Northwest, Jacksonville, Alabama. So moved. Second. Have a motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I just have a motion curious. Item 11. Consideration of ordinance number 0-60. 647-23, amending a portion of section 19-81, chapter 19, solid waste, article four, trash collections of the code of ordinance of the city of Jacksonville, Alabama. First reading. No, thank you, ma'am. That's just the first reading. We'll have a second at the, at the next meeting. Item 12. Consider action to approve JPWP number 23-120. Case I, Replacement, Gaston Road, Mountain Street Northwest, Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest, and Oak Avenue Northwest, per the attached. So moved, sir. Have a motion and second. Any discussion? 
Hearing none, all clerks say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it, she carries. Item 12A. Consider action to approve the employment of the following. Robert Crompton, part-time laborer for Senior Center Program, range one, effective upon compliance with ordinance number 273, due to the resignation of Melissa Clay. So moved. Sam? Have a motion second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all purpose say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it, motion carries. Item 13. Consider action to approve the promotion of the following. Jeremy Kinney, Police Corporal, SRO, effective June 14, 2023. So moved. Second. Have a motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Item 14. Consider action to accept the resignation of the following. Item A is Christian Nimley. Utility Maintenance Assistant, effective May 26, 2023. Item B is Timothy Hanna, Part-Time Public Safety Communications Officer, effective June 1, 2023. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Aye. Seven. Motion carries. Item 15. Consider action to acknowledge the retirement notification of the following. Penelope Hine, Inventory and Account Specialist in the Utility Office, effective June 30, 2023. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Consent agenda. Item 16, budget amendment request. Item 17, purchases over $7,500. Item 18, disposition of surplus property. Item 19, request to attend conference. Training session with costs exceeding $1,000. So moved. Sir. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all heard say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Item 20 is public comments for any general items. Anything you'd like to come address the council uh, with or about, this is your opportunity to do so. Seeing no one come forward, we'll move on to council member remarks. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. ma'am, please just come to the podium, state your name and address, and then make sure you get with the city clerk before you leave. Okay. Who is that? Me. Okay. Uh, Vicki Fox. I'm at 400 Van Street, Southeast Jacksonville. Uh, I got a question. Um, I'm thinking, do they have some kind of ordinance? for the community, for trash that's being in, in the yard, you know, cans or appliances and all that kind of stuff, you know. Is it some kind of clean up or ordinance to keep your yard maintained? Yeah. Yes, there is. Yes. Yeah, th they should be. We should be able to get someone out there. We can get our code enforcement officer to come it's up and It's not for my yard. <laughs> if you'll my, give, that, that's not my yard. Right. If you'll give the chief and give him an address of everything, we'll get the code enforcement officer to look at that tomorrow or sometime soon. Uh, well, do you let the public know some kind of way? Uh, does each uh, individual in the community get some kind of uh, uh, information or paperwork or something saying to keep your yard tidy or maintained? Yeah, that that might be difficult. Sure. Something we probably can look at, or that, uh, that else, uh, we let people know about our website and uh, Facebook, and we get the information out to them somehow, some way. But if you let the chief know the address, yes, ma'am. Usually, what happens is if we get a complaint, or as our code enforcement officer, who is under the police department now, drives through the city and they see a problem, they'll stop and talk to that homeowner. So if you have a complaint about it, about one, you can either call City Hall and leave the complaint with us at City Hall, or you can call the police department and leave a message for the code enforcement officer, and then somebody will come out and address the issue. Well, it's not really a complaint. It's just that uh, it, makes the, it makes the community look bad. It's bad. You know, it's right on the main street. I mean, you can't have stuff passing by to see it. I know you've seen it if you drive through. I'll get with you. I'll right here. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have someone else left to address the council. Cynthia Bookman, 1011 Louis Drive, Southeast Jacksonville, Alabama. 
uh, on route to where I, where I go to uh, go go to my home on Eighth Street, Eighth and Ladina. It's been going on for at least seven, eight years, but it's then got worse. People are not stopping at the stop sign on Eighth Avenue uh, and Ladina. It's going right through, you know, the uh, stop sign. They come from over on this side and they just going through and they're throwing trash on both sides of the, you know, at the stop sign and all. But I, I think it's a, a bad problem. I try to stop maybe two or three feet back where the stop sign is and just hold it there five, six seconds. Then I go on and just go straight through. If you're on this side of Lodiva, they just, they just going like this. Nobody stopping. Nobody stopping. I don't know if we need cameras there or, or police there or whatever. But it's just constant. They will not stop. They're not stopping. Then they throw in trash in people's yard and things like that. You, you can go down the 8th of the diary and see trash over there at 533 East of Lager. You can see it over there by the Brothers' house and places like that, just slinging trash in the stream at the stop signs, and then they're just constantly running the stop sign. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, 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 do you mind dealing with our city clerk right here? And, she's the and also, uh, let she know about that address you're talking about, and maybe we'll get someone out there to look at that also. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else like to address the council? Seeing no one, council member remarks. I'd like to uh, make sure everyone saw where our commercial development people were recognized at the uh, Small Business Awards for the Calvin County Chamber. I thought that was pretty neat. I'd like to turn my time over to uh, Chief Marcus Woods. I think he has the presentation. Any question? So we want to take this time, you know, it's a, I think it's a good thing when individuals get to retire, but it's an even greater thing when they get to retire twice. Uh, <laughs> so recently, uh, Duff Manor um, retired for a second time from the school system, and tonight we'd like to present him with this plaque. Duff? So it's presented to Jonesy Duff Manor for your outstanding performance and service to the Jacksonville City Schools, the Jacksonville Police Department, and the citizens and students therein. Duff dedicated over four years of his life to service for others. Duff's life is the definition of someone with a true servant's heart. Uh, his, his career spanned from fe February 15, 1983 through May the 25th, 2023. Thank you, Duff. Thank you. service with C.D. Jackson for all those years. Uh, we, uh, I mean, just a, a lifelong uh, Jackson Vivian and, and, and be able to do what you've done for, for 40 years. I've had all y'all's kids and then I had him. <laughs> this one over here is one of my students. So he used to ride with me in the police car. Right across I was in trouble. <laughs> yeah, we'll discuss that later. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us later? Yeah. Unless he got to messing with the siren. He can do that. <laughs> Uh, you know, Councilor, have you anything else? Mayor's report. Thank you. I would like to second what Terry was saying about the commercial development of already seen their award. You know, that was a Chamber of Commerce, very nice banquet for celebrating the small businesses in Gavin County. And uh, for us to get that, for the commercial development party to get that award, I thought was pretty, pretty significant. So their category was small business active. That's what they did. They have small businesses. So I thought that's very nice for you to get that award or they were able to get that award. Uh, just a couple of things to remind you about. Of course, Monday is, will be a holiday for the city. All city operations will be shut down. And you have a nice invitation for a celebration for Juneteenth at uh, JSU. Uh, Leo, I probably could tell you more about that than, than I can. We can <laughs> speak to that. 
I was just going to put the time in there. I knew that it was happening, but I wasn't sure the time. <laughs> yeah, it is five to nine in the, in the courtyard of, of Mayor Hall. And it says there's going to be some food there, free food and some music. So it's not like quite a celebration. So if you can't you take advantage of that, that'd be great. Uh, there's a couple of events scheduled for the summer on the square. And you'll see those dates up there, Saturday, June 24th, the big music on the square. And, and you just, you know, we'll talk about these as we move along during the month. But, but a cruise in on uh, June 29th and a back to school bash on, the 20, on August 19th. So three nice events there for us coming up to the Salton Square. Then remind you once again, Jack Fest is coming up July 3rd from 6 to 9 p.m. Uh, they're going to be usual kind of activities, vendors, uh, activities for kids, and then uh, we'll have music there as well, and then uh, fireworks at 9 p.m. So remember, it's going to be a little different setup this time. We can't use the high school football stadium because we're getting new turf down. So, but there'll be the fireworks will be shot from a location. It's just that we'll be gathering around the uh, area in front of this building, rather than back there on the football field. So be prepared to bring you a lunch chair and so forth and sit around and play. Our Eagle Point's going to have a lot of activities, I think, going over at their place. So take advantage of different areas of the park and watch fireworks in this area here. So that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Uh, before we get to the last item of any other business, I'd like to thank uh, Reverend Jim Wilson from RMC Chaplain. We did not inform him that our meeting was going to go a little quicker tonight. and. But he came all dressed in his yellow to brighten our evening anyway. So thanks, sir, for being here. But uh, Terry Wilson stepped in for you. It's, it's I'm sorry I've been down on the thing, so I apologize. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. It was our fault for not letting you know. So thank you for being here. Uh, any other business that comes from the council? All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I said the most curious. Thank you all. Be safe. Thank you, sir.